the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company presents the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. Riding in the brush. Where are you boys heading? Very strange. Figured they were too young to be traipsing around out there at night, so I collared them. That's right. Hey, what's wrong with your wrist, son? Nothing. Oh, come on now. Let me see it. Let me see yours. Rope burn. Pretty bad. Somebody tell you boys up? No. We were just... We were just playing with some rope. What's your name? I'm Billy. He's Tad. He's my brother. What's your last name? Bristol. You got any folks in Bitter Springs? Yes, our dad. They've got him there. We want to see him, Mr. Sheriff. It's real important. You can use my rig, Jim. Thanks. We'll need these. It's cold on the mason. Come on, boys. With any luck, we should get there about sunup. I'll have your rig back tomorrow. Jim Harris. Big Jim from Agate? That's me. Just a minute, Jim. Come on, boys. We're in Bitter Springs. Come on out. It's still dark out. Won't be long. I'm hungry. Well, Miss Amy will fix you something to eat. Say, Jim, what's this? 
Just a couple of boys needing some food and shelter. Well, come on in. You probably all could use some. Jim, what's this all about? Amy, this is an emergency. Just keep your eye on these boys for me, will you? But, but who are they? I can't tell you now. I haven't time. Should be around in about an hour. In that case, I'd like to see Bristow. Nobody's to see him. That's ordered. Well, in that case, I'd like to come inside. I'm sorry, Sheriff. Nobody's to come in here. That's ordered, too. I see. Well, thanks. Sheriff, wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Hold on, 
when you want out. Thanks. What are you selling? Nothing. Just want to talk. Got a badge. You didn't just come in here to talk about the price of oats. That's right, I didn't. Get out. I got nothing to say. You better listen, Bear. Might mean something to you. Shut up and get out. I'm Jim Harris, sheriff from over at Agate. Last night, two boys were brought to me. They said you were their father. Who told you to say that? Who told you to say that about them kids? Nobody. That's what happened. A rancher named Willibrand found him on the trail and brought him into my office. Just run across him. Couldn't be, mister. Couldn't be. Couldn't be? Then you do have two boys. Yeah. Couldn't be the ones you found. Why not? Somebody's got them, somebody's hanging on them. Keep you from talking? All I gotta do is start naming names. My kids get it quick and ugly. Bear, I've got your boys. What do they look like? Well, Billy, he's about that tall. Red-headed and freckle-faced. Little fellow's named Tad. Mister, I gotta believe you. There ain't nobody in the world ever seen them kids but the fellows I worked with. If you just described them. If you got them, where are they? Right here in town. They're all right. They're fine. I can't figure out what to do. You can talk now, Bear. You don't have to hang. Your boys are safe. You're gonna hang me, mister. I ain't got much, but what I got you welcome to. I'll go tell the judge. Uh, wait a minute. I want to see my kids first. It ain't that I don't trust you. I look in your face and I trust you, mister. But I want to see them kids first. You'll see them. I'll be back. Hey, Marshal. I'll let you out, Sheriff. Thanks. Marshal had to go out. He'll be back a little bit. Tell him I'll see him later. Right. say, Jim, is it's a good thing you don't have any kids of your own. What do you mean? You can't treat them like white-faced herpers, shove them around without any food or sleep. Well, then you feed them, put them to bed. Jim, you know better than that. The fellow you sent just took them right off. What fellow? Well, the man who gave me this note said you wanted the boys to see their father. Amy, I didn't write this note. But I, I didn't know. How could I tell? What do you look like? Well, he was tall and he had a bad scar on his right cheek. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Oh, I've wasted enough time on this Bristol thing. I should have passed sentence two days ago. You've got to hold off. But I'm a circuit judge. I've got 20 townships to cover, and they're waiting on me to each and every one of them. Another day of so can't hurt. Hasn't it occurred to you that this business with the boys might be just a trick to delay the court? What would that gain? Time. That ain't the strongest jail in the world, you know. Judge, those boys are straight. I'd bet my shirt on it. There's more than a shirt at stake. If I could only convince you. All right, you can. How? Produce the boys. How much time will you give me? All right, let's see now. Say what I'll do, Sheriff. I should be cleaned up here around 5 this afternoon. I'll make his case the last one on the docket. Well, that's still not a lot of time. Ooh, you're supposed to be a pretty fair tracker. We call for more than a tracker. We call for a Pawnee medicine man. Caught about ready, Judge? Uh, yes, but I promised the Sheriff here to hold off with the bear till last. What's the matter? The Bristol boys are missing. Six of us knew they were in town. I'm counting out the judge and Amy and myself. That leaves you and the marshal and his deputy. Are you inferring that... I'm inferring nothing. I'd just like to know where you were between breakfast and now. I protest this. I'm a known and respected businessman. I came here from Fort Collins at my own expense to testify... Hey, Carlock, it might save trouble if you'd answer. 
Oh, I was in my room. The clerk will testify to that. Thank you. See you gentlemen later. Marcus, the Bristol boys are gone. Somebody gave Amy a fake note. That's going to change his thing. Frank, it might look better for you if you'd help him clear up a few things. What do you mean? Just for the record. In this case, there's any questions asked later. What are you driving at? Well, where were you between now and the time I left you? Look, Jim, I'm the law in this town, remember? But for your information, I was right here doing my work. Not when I came out of Bristol itself. I was over at the Silver Dollar for a few minutes. Well, I guess the barkeeper would remember. I think he would. I'd better be tracking. Hey, Frank. Like you say, you're the lawyer here. How about giving me a hand? Always glad to give you a little help, Jim. And I know it's a question of time. Clem, if you need any help, get money. I see, they haven't had time to get very far, and they wouldn't dare keep those boys around here. Any good hideouts around here? It's nothing special. Any caves, mines, old homesteads, stay within 10 miles? Well, there's no mines. A couple of caves and a few shacks. Well, we'll work them all. Make it in a big circle. Well, you could start right here. There's some old diggings and a couple of shacks. I seen some smoke coming out of the old Peterson place a couple of days ago. Well, we'll start there. A little on your way. Well, we'll start there anyhow. All right. Now, this is a Peterson place. They moved on when the springs went dry. I don't see any smoke around here. Nothing in here? You check outside, Frank. I'll have a look in the house. Right. gun here covered. Him all right, look at that scar. No excuse for that, Marshal. Oh, wait a minute, you gonna tell me how to handle an outlaw? Supposing your shot didn't get him. Then he could talk. He's no good to us now. Well, if he could talk, he could shoot. Maybe, maybe not. That's the chances we've got to take in this business. On getting killed? Not me. I'm thinking about two boys. What he did with them. Well, there's plenty, plenty of tracks around. Take a choice. Yeah, four of them. Smart enough to take different directions. Well, let's get back to town. All right, I'll send one of the boys out to pick him up. Clem? We took Bristol over to the court. I reckon the judge got around to him. I'll be over to England. Never seen a lawman so interested in an outlaw before. What's this way? I'll beat the cattleman. Order in the court. Order in the court. The prisoner will face the court. All right, Mill, bring him up here. Now, I've listened to everything everybody's had to say about this thing, Bristol. 
and it's plain to me that you're guilty. But I'm going to give you one last chance before I pass sentence on you. It's within my power to let you off with a year and a day, or I can hang you. You understand? In fact, I can do just about anything with you I want to. Yes, sir. I'm going to share the burden with you. So make your own choice. One last time. Tell the court what it wants to know and get off easy. Listen, mister. There's a man coming. He's found my kid, see? He should have been here before now, but he'll be along. I know he will. Then I'll tell you. There's no man coming, Bear. It is the verdict of this court that the defendant, Alvin T. Bristow, alias the Bear, after being duly tried by this court in accordance with the laws of the territory. Furthermore, it is the decision of this court that the defendant shall be taken at the earliest convenience to the place of execution and there be hanged by the neck until dead. And may God have mercy on your soul. Circuit Court for the 18th District now stands adjourned. All right, Mill, take him back and lock him up. A judge! Judge, you got to reconvene the court. Just a minute now, Sheriff. I found the Bristol boys. No shenanigans now, Jim. Bring him in, Amy. Your Honor. I promised to produce the Bristol boys, and here they are. Are you crazy? Those aren't the bears. He's right. They're not the Bristol boys. Well, then what are they doing here? Now, look here, Jim. I just got through warning Listen, you. Judge. Carl, I told him the Bristol boys to keep the bear from telling that he's been robbed in his own stages. Stay where you are. circumstances surrounding this case, it is my pleasure to commute your sentence to a period of not more than... Bye, boys. 
Bye, Miss Amy. Bye, Jim. 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 Bye, Jim.